Ethereum blockchain is close to the March upgrade. Introduction of a new client at this point is a good step towards adding client diversity. To learn about the new Ethereum client implementation for execution layer, continue watching. Welcome to Peep and Eat episode 84. I'm Pooja Ranjan back with another episode on Know Your Client series. Today, we are joined by Ethereum client developer Artyom Vartaniko, who is currently working on development of Akula, a project by the Aragon team. About the client, as per the official website description, written in Rust, Akula is a next generation implementation of Ethereum protocol. We will learn more about Akula in this episode with Artyom. Welcome to the show, Artyom. Welcome. Thank you for joining. And because this is your first time joining us on Peep and Eep show, may we start with a brief introduction and how do you find your way to the Ethereum community? Sure. Thank you, Pooja, for having me today. And my name is Artyom. I've been in the Ethereum core development community for around two and a half years at this point. Previously, starting January 2020 and until August 2020, I was the lead developer of Open Ethereum, basically maintaining it and keeping it alive after Parity handed off the project to Gnosis. I was part, part of Gnosis back then, and I is coordinated, led the development of Open Ethereum, and as I said, made sure that it stayed with sync with the rest of the network and we supported our users who relied on exclusive at that time parity features like tracing API, which is, by the way, available both in Aragon and Akula, but we'll come to that later. Uh, after August 2020, I left Open Ethereum to join Aragon. Uh, since that time, I have been on the roster as the Aragon core developer. Basically, I spent several months significantly improving Aragon and participating in the research. Uh, and Aragon is basically the premier platform for research into Ethereum nodes, into Ethereum uh, protocol, potential protocol improvements. And uh, after that, I decided to basically maybe do my own thing and uh, write in the language that, uh, that I want to write in Rust. Aragon is written in Go, uh, while Akula takes all the best things from Aragon in terms of features and in terms of innovations and just implements them in Rust, which is the shiny new and very fast programming language with us since 2015. Open Ethereum was written in it, and uh, now Akula is the Rust implementation of the Ethereum protocol. That is very interesting. Thank you for sharing this. So uh, we will get into details of how Akula was developed and uh, maybe an uh, interesting feature about it. Uh, but uh, let's uh, start with a little bit of uh, like motivation. I read somewhere that Akula was originally conceived as a helper library for the Edivon database. So at what point uh, the team decided or you decided to move to a full client implementation? This is actually a very good question and kind of shows uh, where roads can lead you to like the the dark depths of the core development um the thing is that uh basically over the past two years i slowly built up the required the new required components for uh building the new implementation so originally i built sentry it was like known at the time like now sentry is just part of akula but at that time there was an independent project called Ethereum Sentry, which was about making a peer-to-peer -peer node, which would connect to the Ethereum peer-to-peer -peer network and just listen to it, like uh, get incoming blocks, incoming transactions, and uh, just provide users with an option of what to do with that. So we couldn't do any block processing, it wouldn't build any state. It's just a, a peer, and that's it. But uh, it was there, it, it was developed, it works, uh, and... Uh, after that, for my personal reasons, I decided like, why not make a library to access Aragon database, especially since I was working on Aragon. So that library was called ethdb, uh, Rust Ethereum slash ethdb, like that's the, the precise repo address on GitHub, to basically uh, access uh, Aragon's MDBX uh, database and read everything that Aragon stored, like all the, what, two terabytes of data. 
but uh, after some time, after like I had uh, ETB, I understood that if you implement the data access layer, you basically implement the storage model. And this is like the Aragon key innovation. This is the changed storage model, which is a lot more effective than, than the way, than the classic way nodes are built. Combine that with the PHP layer and build an execution on top of it. And uh, you already have, uh, you could have an MVP for the node. So at that point, I decided like, why not make my own node? Like it seemed crazy at the time, like, like node, it's uh, making your own cloud, Ethereum client is just so much work. Like, like parity Ethereum, it's like, it was like worth 200,000 lines of code. Like it's huge. Or like, look at Go Ethereum. It's also many, many, many thousands of lines of code. But uh, like, why not? Maybe we could try. Uh, it's, uh, it's also research, like it's uh, it fits the Aragon's project purpose very well. It's also research. It improves in some ways upon Aragon in uh, different prospects. And also it uh, provides the client diversity, the vulnerable client diversity that is required for, for Ethereum to, if you want to advance any kind of innovation. So at that time, I decided to just try it. And uh, after one and a half years of work, here we are. It works. It syncs. It's a viable uh, full node implementation. That is interesting. Of course, uh, after Parity or the Open Ethereum, there was a big gap and the client diversity is a big challenge at present for the execution layer especially. So having an addition of new client gives option to users to maybe try something new. A question that is like related to the Aragon team itself. I'm aware that Aragon is also having a C++ implementation uh, known as Silkworm. So how is Akula different from Aragon and Silkworm? So uh, basically just like Silkworm, Akula is built from fresh from ground up. It's not a fork of any existing uh, node implementation. It is uh, not, it doesn't have any strings attached both in terms of forks and also in terms of licensing so it doesn't it didn't inherit any copy left uh from uh, go ethereum or in our case from parity ethereum at the same time uh, how it's different from silkworm uh in, from silkworm uh compared to silkworm it's in a different language it's in in rust not c++ basically Rust, in my personal opinion, it's uh, a reimagined C++ as if C++ was developed not in 1970s, but in in the middle of uh, 2000s, 2010s, basically, using uh, 40 years of uh, in between of programming language theory innovation to improve actually the design of the language. And it's uh, much less of a hodgepodge that uh, C++ has become uh, because like C++ has changed a lot of times, has gone through many, many concepts, has tried out a lot, but as a result, it's a much less cohesive language compared to Rust. So Rust is much cleaner. It's much more convenient to, to work with. It has the best of the industry tooling, like Cargo Package Manager for Rust. It's, it is considered to be the gold standard of all package managers for all languages. And uh, the situation here is polar in C++ that C++ and C also, they are considered to be the languages with the worst uh, installer slash package manager situation. So uh, reusing libraries is generally a big pain point in C++. So because of that, because of, of, of these points, it's actually much, easier and much faster to develop a node in, in Rust than in C++. And it's most importantly gives comparable performance, if not better performance, because Rust is as a low, is as low level as C++ basically. It was designed as essentially a C++ replacement. So all this boils down to that uh, there are two languages, uh, Rust and C++. There are also two nodes, Akul and Silkwar. Currently, Akula is already a full node implementation. It works, it syncs. While Silkworm, it has the execution module and it can build some of the indexes 
but it's it does not have the the complete uh, uh, syncing pipeline. So it it's not yet a full no, but I'm sure it will be. It just takes longer, if not much longer, time to develop. Interesting, very interesting. I mean, one team coming up with three different client implementation, providing opportunity for users to maybe try different things differently and with uh, some different features. Um, talking about like designs and features, um, I understand the architecture of Akula suggests a modular approach for uh, the client development. Can you maybe talk a little bit about uh, modular client design and why was that selected for the full client development? So the general idea about modularity, um, there are two layers to modularity, basically. The first one is that in like Aragon itself and uh, optionally, Akula too, they are like, they can be both monolithic full nodes that provides all the services that is uh, the general sync, transaction pool, sentry, that is the peer, the peer on the peer-to-peer -peer network. And in the future, like, uh, like also the consensus, like it's part of currently it's ingrained in Akula and Silk War and Aragon, but it will also be able to be split potentially. But it's not necessary. And RPC demon, most importantly, like providing the Ethereum JSON RPC. Uh, you can take out these components, you can run them as separate processes outside uh, of the main Akula or Aragon binary. And uh, you can run, for example, many instances of RPC daemon and connect them to the same database. This is one layer to modularity. Like it provides uh, basically the ability to horizontally scale uh, serving uh, CPU intensive RPC requests like ETH call, for example, or tracing. That is one la um, layer to modularity. Another thing is that the core itself, which, which is basically so something that I have not described yet. So everything else is in core, but the core itself, like this, the syncing part, the syncing process, where which downloads the blocks, processes them, builds the Ethereum world state, computes state root on top of it. It itself has a very unique uh, syncing pipeline, which is not yet seen anywhere in the blockchain space in general. It's called stage sync. So unlike other Ethereum node implementations, and not just Ethereum, any other node in general of any blockchain network, we do not provide, uh, we do not structure everything as like a set of actors. Instead, what we do, is uh, everything, the whole, the whole syncing thing, the whole syncing pipeline, it's just an infinite loop, which just calls uh, several functions sequentially, like one after another, after another, after another. Like, uh, basically the difference is that we do not do processing by block, but we do processing by function. Basically download all headers, from Genesis to current tip, download all blocks from Genesis to current tip, then, uh, for example, retrieve all senders uh, from transactions from uh, Genesis to current tip, then execute actually all transactions from current tip and build state, then compute uh, the Ethereum uh, state root at the, at the current tip. So we don't do like everything for one block, like the way it's usually done. I do everything for one block, like uh, download one block, instantly process it, that is executed, uh, compute state roots, uh, build indexes, then do the next block. We, we do the other way around. So we do uh, one thing for all blocks. And uh, this leads to two benefits, most important benefits. First is that one person, one developer can take his one thing, one one index, and not touch, uh, basically not touch the whole pipeline. So he can do just his one function, do it well, do it in with in parallel, for example, if if it allows. And some things are actually parallelized compared to to the classic way nodes are built. For example, retrieving 
uh, address of the sender of the transaction from the signature. This is a very CPU intensive operation. It, uh, and uh, if there are a lot of transactions, it actually takes a lot of time. Uh, but if you do it everything by block, instead of by one thing, then you cannot paralyze it. You cannot use the multiple CPU cores. So it actually takes a lot of time, a long time. And uh, you have to paralyze it if you want to speed up. So our approach allows speeding this up. This is one thing. Um, so, and, uh, and, uh, that's, uh, basically the advantage of the, of our stage sync pipeline. That is awesome. Um, I assume that uh, processing by header and not by blocks may possibly lead to processing time. That can be an additional advantage as you were saying already. So um, now let's maybe talk about uh, the, uh, the database, the sync time, and the execution uh, speed of uh, Akula with respect to any other client those are available at the moment. So basically the aforementioned advantages in, the, in how we do sync, they basically, and also the innovations in the data model, they mean that you can, again, sync the archive node actually, and it will, it, it will work. Like it won't take you months, it won't take you weeks, it will take you at worst days, if not hours, depending on how on how uh, fast your computer is and on how good your internet connection is. So basically, there are two implementations that work with Aragon Ideas, that is Aragon itself and Akula. Uh, but the difference between them is that Akula has, it's a clean slate implementation with many of the legacy stuff uh, removed or like not present because Aragon inherited a lot from Go Ethereum, which is not really compatible with Aragon ideas. So this is actually getting cleaned out over time, but this still take, takes time. And another thing is that um, Rust is just a much more low level, but at the same time, more convenient language than Go. It doesn't have garbage collection. It's generally more efficient in terms of CPU, uh, CPU cycles. And the current bottleneck, uh, both in Aragon and in Akula, is the execution of the transactions of approximately, I think it's just under 2 billion already transactions in Ethereum since 2015. So executing all of them from Genesis to current tip, it actually takes a lot of time. It's actually the most, the longest stage it, uh, and in Akula, it takes approximately, takes what, 18 hours, 17 hours, depending uh, on your CPU. Like if you take like the best of the line CPU, that is, uh, I think uh, 12900K uh, or 12900KS from Intel, this would take uh, less than 24 hours, but close to it. This is the most intensive stage, and this is where our EVM written in Rust really shines. So this is like the uh, the performance figure. Like there are also other stages, but in general, like execution takes more than fifty percent of the time. Interesting, and I believe you briefly touched about the uh, the center part, the main machine that is working behind it. I understand Akula EVM is not the usual EVM that is being used for uh, any other client. So maybe if you would like to talk a little bit about EVM mode in or the Akula EVM. So basically, uh, Akula originally used EVM Odin. That was also another project that I didn't mention. Uh, another project built separately from uh, separately as a separate component, just like Sentry and EVDB. EVM Odin's uh, key thing is that it follows the EVMC um, interface, which, which allows for for switching out so-called host. Host uh, is an entity that actually provides for for uh, the storage of of accounts of storage slots, and which also calls interpreter when 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 basically when interpreter reaches a call into another smart contract. Like it goes back to the host and host calls the, the uh, EVM interpreter. So EVM Odin is not strictly an EVM, it's an EVM interpreter. It's like one half of it. Uh, it's resumable. Like this is like the key advantage of it is that it's resumable. So it's compa you can, when it reaches 
like anything it it needs from host, like give me storage, give me account, uh, it stops. It stops execution and it it uh, hands the control back to the programmer, and programmer can do whatever the programmer wants. However, this feature of resumability it's uh, it has it presents a significant penalty in terms of uh, CPU cycles, in terms of how long execution takes. For that reason, uh, Akula does not use EVM Odin directly anymore. Instead, uh, we we modified EVM Odin, and uh, it's now called Akula EVM. It's part of Akula. It's not resumable, so it's just an EVM interpreter. It's a very fast EVM interpreter, one of the fastest on the market. Uh, it's integral part of Akula and. Uh, Oh, that's it. It works, it's fast. <laughs> that's great. And thanks for clarifying. Okay, uh, so one question now, like, is Akula ready for users? Well, the, there, that's, um, that's uh, an interesting question. There are like, it depends on the user currently because Akula works, Akula syncs, Akula syncs fast. As you as you probably tested or our user our listeners could have tested already. It can be used as an archive node. Like if you are, for example, a business and you need tracing or you need logs for transactions, or you just need some few into blockchain into Ethereum, then you can definitely use a Kula. One thing that we don't have yet, we do not have a transaction pool and mining that is or validator mode. It's the same thing. We don't not have them yet. This is work in progress. It will take some time, not long, but it will take some time for it to appear in Akula and be tested. So I'm not sure if you can use MetaMask already with, paired with Akula. Maybe, the answer is maybe. Not uh, Basically, the part's not related to the transaction pool. But as the archive node, not the transaction pool node, but archive node, it fully works. And we do have actual users who actually use Akula to do their own thing. Well, you partially answered my next uh, part of this question. Like, uh, is there any um, specific target user base? You mentioned that validator mode is work in progress. That is fine. Um, are you uh, planning to maybe target hobbyist or uh, just general Ethereum node runner. Uh, just general Ethereum node runner. Like uh, I'm not, like I'm not cutting off uh, anyone from Akula. Obviously, anyone will be able to use Akula for any purpose. So, like absence, current absence of transaction pool, it's it's not a feature. It's a bug that we are slowly fixing. Right, and um, there was a mention of like mining feature. It is not available, but is there a plan to have that available considering that uh, Ethereum will be out of uh, proof of work? So when I say mining, I don't mean necessarily the proof of work mining, like mining uh, or validating or to be more precise, block creation. So we are working on block creation. Block creation and uh, the ability to give away the uh, block template, basically. So if you can give a give away a block template, uh, then it doesn't really matter like what uh, what kind of consensus you have. Is it proof of work or is it proof of stake? Like the key feature here is not mining itself, not crunching numbers, but uh, the creation of the block or at the side of the node. Like this is what we are working on. If we, yeah, I'm not sure we will have ET hash at any point. Maybe we will remove it after uh, after Ethereum uh, mainnet uh, does the merge. Maybe we will completely remove traces of ET hash algorithm. Uh, but uh, it doesn't mean that mining will go away because mining is just the slang for block creation. Right, that make a lot of sense. So I, I was looking into uh, the website, the official website, and it states that the Akula client at the moment uh, supports network out of the box. And uh, some of the networks mentioned here is Sepolia, Gorli, Robston. Obviously, Rinkby is deprecated for uh, like Ethereum uh, main chain. Uh, 
So let's talk about all these test nets. And uh, we know that merge is around the corner. So um, how soon do you think Akula will be able to participate in DevNet for merge or maybe even after the merge? Uh, so Akula does not participate in the, in the merge DevNet, which actually tells the merge event. And most importantly, uh, we do not have the plan to support the merge event itself. That is when the consensus does the switch. Uh, the rationale is that we are not, like we're not the backbone of the network yet and uh, likely we will, we will not be by the time the merge hits mainnet. So, and there are no validators running Akula, so it doesn't just make any sense for the complexity. So what will happen instead is uh, we do implement post-merge Basically, Akula can run paired with uh, with consensus layer clients. It does run Sepolia. It does run Robsten. So what happens is that we just uh, edit when the merge hits. We just edit the configuration of the network in the source code and just manually just change the consensus from from uh, ETE hash to to beacon merge consensus. With and uh, fill uh, fill in the required parameters like the actual block where the merge hit. So we do not have terminal total difficulty supported, but we do uh, support this transition post factum, and um, that's it. But we do support post merge, and uh, I expect that will be the same way on mainnet. So our users, when the merge event hits, uh, most likely will have to shut down their node. We will. We'll do an emergency update on the point of the merge. It will take, I don't know, five minutes. Uh, they will download the new uh, version of the node and just run it. It will be, as I said, five minutes of downtime. Uh, maybe it's unfortunate, but it uh, allows us to not implement the merge, which, which is arguably complex. Right. Um, so today there was an announcement of uh... Sepolia post merge upgrade, uh, which is expected somewhere around August 17 for uh, Sepolia testnet. Considering uh, Akula supports Sepolia, are we planning to participate in this? We we are planning to 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 participate, of course. Like we uh, have not looked and we have not implemented this upgrade yet. Uh, I guess we have two weeks to do so, uh, but we will continue being. Uh, with the network, with the mainnet, and with all official testnets. That's awesome. And uh, after Garli uh, and Prater testnet merge, I hope that similar upgrade will be planned for Garli Prater as well. And um, yeah, that would be another testing ground for Akula to have post-merge upgrades. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we briefly talked about like its readiness with um, a combination CL client uh, and have it like the support of validator node. Is there any favorite CL um, client for Akula? Considering Lighthouse written in Rust, do you think it will be the most compatible or Akula is designed in a way that it can be run with any consensus layer client? Technically, uh, we Akula implements not uh, not like not any flavor of the of the consent of the of the merge protocol, to, but implements like the, the minimum amount necessary to get to be on with the network. So as I said, we do not support validation yet. So Akula doesn't support the whole merge protocol yet. Only the required minimum to be with the network to make sure that the consensus layer runs and Akula runs. So it was a conscious decision to optimize resources. Like it will be fixed, just give it some time. As for the exact consensus layer, clients. Uh, I'm testing with Lighthouse personally. Uh, I have not tested all combinations, never had the time to do it. So Lighthouse is guaranteed to work because, well, uh, I'm testing it. But uh, but uh, if it doesn't work with other consensus layer implementations, again, it's a bug, not a feature. And uh, if someone discovers an issue, we will promptly fix it. Right. Yeah, generally speaking, like I have I have talked to so many clients, both on EL and CL side, and because they were participating in interrupt sessions and they were testing on different client combination, we definitely have like a 
information that it works, the general uh, consensus and execution specs works with each other, irrespective of the language of clients. So hopefully it works for Akula too, and we don't find much bugs there. Um, let's talk a little bit about client diversity. Everyone knows that uh, the execution layer is not so good looking at the moment. How do we see the future of Akula? Um, maybe after the merge, when it is fully ready uh, for uh, general usage. And um, do you think that Akula will be helpful to get the network share of parity? Most importantly, uh, I think uh, it's um, it's a bit uh, it's a bit late to talk about uh, parity share on the network because parity does not exist on the network anymore. Only the nodes that didn't care to upgrade, but they have been kicked off with the latest uh, difficulty bomb switch. So that's uh, that's one thing. There is no more parity share on the network anymore. I do believe that those who need the tracing, they switch to Aragon at this point. And the tracing works in Aragon, works well. And it's like the recommended uh, client to switch to. But Akula may as well take some of that Aragon share and a share of other implementations. I do not preclude that. That is very much possible. De again, it de all depends on us. Everything is in, in our hands, how fast we will develop, uh, how fast we will keep up with others. It's a competition, uh, but I do think we are handling this competition well enough. That is awesome. Talking about uh, like uh, managing the client or maybe providing features and continued development, where is the best place to find resources and how a community may be able to contribute if they are interested? The general answer to this question is come to our Telegram and we'll talk. That, uh, that there, uh, there are always uh, stuff to, to help out with. Uh, there is always stuff to discuss in private, how or what can be developed uh, in a cola or if someone needs something special in a cola, which is like something non standard, how we can collaborate. This is, uh, this is all discussable. Uh, we do have an open Telegram and uh, all community members are encouraged to join it and uh, come visit us. Sweet. A follow up. I'm not sure if it is appropriate here or not, but just out of curiosity, most of the clients are on Discord. Then why Telegram? The, uh, there are two things to it. Uh, first of all, um, Telegram is it's a lot, it's a much more convenient to use as general use messenger compared to Discord. Like it's actually the source of uh, I'm I'm Russian. I live in Russia, and uh, in Russia, Telegram is in general the source of information, source of news like the, uh, the news line for everyone. It's also the private chat, like WhatsApp for your friends and family. And uh, it's, uh, it, it works fast, it works well, it works in any remote location, much, much better than Discord. So Discord is it's only good if you like, need to build a huge community with a lot of channels. It's not currently the thing with Ecola. We only have one channel, one discussion room, and that's it. And uh, this preference for Telegram, it's also validated by the fact that many Ethereum communities, they are actually on Telegram, like Lobster DAO, for example, like the most known example. So I wouldn't say that Discord is the universal choice for, for communities. In, and uh, at some point, Trivigath, which Ergon was called at that time, it was also on Telegram until like there, there were many, many more channels. So it switched to this word, but it started on Telegram as well. So Telegram, it's a convenient starting point at least. And maybe not, not just a starting point. It's, a, it's just a very good messenger to use, super convenient. It works anywhere. I would agree. I personally believe that Telegram is helpful for many many, many things, like especially when it comes to uh, talking in terms of file sharing and transfer, it's very convenient than Discord. It comes, like every every app comes with its own uh, trade-off. So yeah, whatever yeah. works best here. All right, um, it's 
probably time to wrap up. Anything that you would like to share with the community? You're welcome to, to use a cooler. You're welcome to test it. it as I said, it works. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to visit our website. The, I'm sure the link will be there. Uh, you're also welcome to visit our Telegram, which is open to, to anyone and say hello and ask any questions to the, to, to the developers and to the community. And uh, Akula is getting better and better day by day, uh, getting there much faster than, than any other implementation before it in my personal opinion. And uh, it will become, I, I believe, the backbone of the Ethereum network at some point. Awesome, these are nice words. And I hope this encouraged new users or even existing user to try Akula. Artem, we appreciate you taking our time to talk about Akula, an efficient client node running option for Ethereum users. I hope uh, with the release of this talk, um, we see increased adoption of Akula and a changing number of client diversity stacks, especially for execution clients. On this note, thanks to our channel subscribers for watching and listening to episode of Know Your Client series. Check out description for related link and Twitter handle of guests to follow. Hit like and share and increase the reach. Should you have any question on this or any other talk, let us know at Eat Catharsis Discord. We'll be back soon with another interesting talk. Till then, keep watching, listening, and keep sharing your love with Ethereum Catharsis. Cheers.